What if I told you that the man who might save Intel's AI future is not from Silicon Valley, he is from Belagavi. Meet Sachin Kati, Intel's new Chief Technology Officer and Head of AI. And he's not just Intel's tech boss, he's their latest shot at catching up in the AI race. So let's tell you how this is not just a promotion, it's almost a pivot point for Intel. So first questions first, who is Sachin Kati? Sachin's journey starts in Karnataka, from St. Xavier's High School, Belagavi to IIT Bombay. Then, a PhD from MIT, a Stanford professor, a wireless tech pioneer, and now Intel's AI chief. He's built radios that broke physics, co-founded startups like Komu Network and Ohana, and led Oran to challenge telecom monopolies. So you can safely say that he is not just another typical executive. That brings us to our next question, why did Intel reboot? Intel's new CEO, Lib Bhutan, is not here to play defensive. He's flattened the organization, cut the red tape and made engineers report directly to him. And guess who's now at the absolute center of Intel's AI playbook? You guessed it right, Sachin. Sachin will now lead Intel Labs, he will define Intel's AI strategy and he will own the product roadmap. He will also rebuild trust with startups and developers. So yeah, he's not just the CTO, he's Intel's chief architect for the future itself. But yeah, Intel did miss the GPU bus. Their Gaudi chips are good, they're cheaper, energy efficient, but the software, not even close to Nvidia's CUDA. And that's where enter Kati. He's built open ecosystems before as well, like Oran. And now he's tasked with turning one API, OpenVINO, and Intel software stack into something that developers can actually use. This is not just about beating Nvidia with raw power. It's about building an ecosystem that developers want to bet on. Now let's talk about the Indian engineering advantage that Sachin has. I mean, we have to talk about the IIT mindset. You don't just learn theory, you learn how to solve problems at scale, but with limited resources. And Intel needs exactly that. Because Kati won't get Nvidia's head start or Google's budgets for that matter. But what he does have is India's super path thought, ideology, doing more, with less. I mean, we all know Jugar, right? So yeah, what's next? Networking, edge computing, AI at the edge. So don't expect another monolithic AI chip, but expect domain-specific AI accelerators that work across industries. Say restaurants, hospitals, telcos, retail flows. Such as play might not be to out GPU NVIDIA, but to win in places that NVIDIA isn't even looking at. Let's for a second talk about the Gelsinger fallout. Let's not forget, India's last big gamble, IDM 2.0, bled billions. Pat Gelsinger tried to bring back Intel's fab dominance, but delays, cost overruns, and missed AI goals left the board uneasy. But now, Sachin inherits the fallout and the challenges of building something better. This is a make or break moment for Intel. If Sachin succeeds, Intel could actually close the AI gap. It can build developer trust, it can finally carve a unique identity in the Gen AI and agentic AI era. But if Sachin fails, Intel might become the next Blackberry almost forgotten. So yeah, Sachin's play is simple. Don't beat Nvidia at their game, but change the game itself. Open source the stack, win over developers, and take AI everywhere where Nvidia isn't there yet. Edge AI, a privacy first AI, affordable AI, that's the future that Intel is betting on. So yes, from Belgavi to boardrooms, Sachin's rise is a bet on brains over brute force. The question now though is, will Intel finally turn potential into performance? Tell us what you think. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. For more such stories on AI in tech, follow and subscribe to AIM TV because think AI, think AIM.